Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of thermochemistry with a bit of thermodynamics taught at the AP IBHL1 level. We're in the midst of talking about the state functions. We started with enthalpy. We're moving into entropy. There's a variety of ways you can discuss entropy. Many people like to think of it as disorder. Hence the little Department of Entropy office there. It certainly describes my son's room. You can think of it as distribution of energy states, probabilities of arrangements. I personally like to think of it in terms of freedom. Freedom of motion, freedom of possibilities. And the reason I do that is because when we talk about entropy, and we can discuss positional entropy, unlike enthalpy, which is a heat transfer process, uh, a positive entropy is more free. Freedom is a positive thing for all you seniors dying to get out of mom and dad's house and into the college environment. So a positive freedom, S entropy positive, means more free. And I like it because it's a little bit more of a positive word in that sense as well. And it too is a state function. Depends only on our final and initial states. Now there is a driving force for a spontaneous process and, and we saw that in the law of thermodynamics. The driving force is an increase in the entropy of the universe. I should have said entropy there instead of energy. Positive S for the universe, so that's entropy there, remember that, fix that, for the universe is spontaneous. You know, unfortunately, discussing the entropy of the universe or measuring the entropy of the universe is not an easy thing to do. It's tough to measure. And so what we're going to be looking at is a balance of these two key factors, a balance of the entropy and the enthalpy of the system. We can focus in on the system then, and we'll use that to predict spontaneity there. All right? So a positive entropy is a favorable situation. Remember with enthalpy, it's negative that's, that's favorable. Here it's a positive that is favorable. Now that doesn't mean that we can't have a, a negative entropy that is spontaneous, but we're going to see it's got to be balanced out by the enthalpy. So we're going to be moving into this. We're going to have a summary chart and I think it'll clarify. But a positive change in entropy is favorable and a negative change in enthalpy is favorable. Now let's take a look at some of the processes in the states. So we'll start with positional entropy and then we'll move into changes to make sure that we are on the right page. Positional entropy. Gases have the most degrees of freedom, the most uh, ways they can be arranged and move, they can rotate, vibrate, translate. Solids have the fewest degrees of freedom. Uh, they can barely move in place. They vibrate a little bit unless they're a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin and then their entropy is zero. All right, increases in entropy involve dissolving, having a solid move into ions that are free to move in an aqueous environment, gas expansion, solids going to liquids and going to gas all involve a positive or an increase in entropy. So let's take a look at the positional entropy here. We have liquid sulfur hexafluoride and we have gaseous sulfur hexafluoride. The more free situation is the gaseous. Many, many more ways that they can move and be arranged and vibrate. So a lot more freedom as a gas. It's kind of like at home, you're a liquid. You, you can move around your house a little bit, uh, go out to friends' houses, but you're not totally free. A gas is when you are totally free to come and go and do what you want, when you want, without having to be accountable to parents. Uh, don't worry, that doesn't last long because very soon you're going to be accountable to spouses, partners, and children. So, um, oxygen gas at 101.33. So, here's 
a pressure or at a compressed. Now think about yourself. When you're compressed, you are pushed into a, a highly ordered state. You have to really organize your time very carefully. Uh, there can be no chaos in your life because you have a lot of pressures to take care of. That's not a positive entropy. This would have the most entropy. So this one is going to be our higher positional entropy is the gas at that high, excuse me, I just said that backwards. Let's fix that, okay? This is the lower pressure. I can't believe I just did that. Oh, Dina, you got it. That is my lower pressure. I just looked at that number funny. Lower pressure means higher positional entropy. I am so, so sorry about that. Low pressure situations will have a higher favorable entropy. Once we compress things, we push them tighter together and they become more ordered and less free. Or I, I like to think of it as less disordered and less free. All right, two separate containers of nitrogen and oxygen. In other words, we're dealing with pure substances going to a mixture. Uh, there's, if we had all guys in my room, there's really only one way we can arrange guy. Guy, 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 sitting next to guy, guy, guy. But the minute you add women to the mix, we get boy, girl, boy, girl, or boy, boy, girl, or boy, boy, girl, girl, or there's all sorts of ways they can be arranged. So the highest positional will be the mixture in that case. All right, now let's look at a change. In this case, we went from a solid to free aqueous ions. A lot of freedom of motion uh, in the fact that they're aqueous as opposed to solid, plus you've got that water in there, so there's a lot of freedom of motion. It's a much more disordered process. In this case, we went from a mixture to a pure. Now, you have to be a little bit careful on this. Hold on 30 seconds. Sorry, my husband got a phone call. Okay, so um, don't always look at the moles. First, look at the states. Let the states be your driving force. Now, once you have all the same state, you can look at the moles of the substance. In this case, I have two moles as opposed to three moles. I have a mixture. It's pure. That went from a place of being more free to less free, and that's a negative thing. We don't like that. All right, and here we have a gas plus a liquid going to aqueous. This one's a little tougher because we really do have some water in here as well. Um, so we really have a mixture and a mixture. And without seeing actual values here, um, I would assume that we are still talking about a negative entropy because we went from a gas to aqueous in a liquid. Okay, so. Uh, that's how I would evaluate that. I'm not sure how negative it would be, but that's what I would predict. Now, in this case, we went from aqueous ions to a solid, just the opposite up above where we had a positive entropy. This is going to be a negative entropy. Okay. Now, I did mention um, about the entropy of the universe in increasing, and we can measure the delta H of our surroundings, or at least estimate it, by saying that delta S is equal to delta H over the temperature. Right? Now, entropy is usually in joules, and we've got to be really careful about that, whereas enthalpy is typically given in kilojoules. So in this case, we'd have delta S is equal to minus 2 eight six zero 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 over my temperature and I want to note here it's a minus from the formula and it's a minus here okay so it ends up being positive over the temperature and I hope you've guessed it yes you do have to convert to Kelvin 
So a minus and a minus sign made that a positive 960 joules per Kelvin. Joules per Kelvin for our entropy units. All right, now this next segment's going to take a little while to develop. So I'm going to hold off until the next video. So until then, this is signing off.